G'day everyone, welcome back to True Footy. Today we are doing another tier maker ahead of the 2024 season and today we are going to rank every team in the league's forward line. So I'm using tier maker again. Yesterday you might have seen that I have done every team in the league's midfield. Today we're doing the forward line and uh, let me know in the comments if you want me to keep going with this series and I'll probably do their back lines too. So without too much messing around, let's crack straight into this. Once again, I am using tier maker and I have got four categories or tiers if you like that I'm going to rank teams into. So like I always do when I start these videos, I'm going to put one team in every section and come up with a bit of a framework. So let's start with the A tier. The first team that comes to mind after a bit of preparation for this video, I think Geelong probably have the best forward line, at least on paper. And so, and you know, it's been well performed as well. Obviously, it wasn't a great 2023 season, but you consider names like Cameron and Hawkins. Like Cameron is still one of the best players in the competition. You probably include Dangerfield in the forward line as well. I know he plays midfield too. Uh, Grian Myers, Stengel, Ollie Henry kicked 41 goals last year. Brad Close, and then Gary Rowan, who admittedly is at the end of his career. But as far as star talent goes, Geelong is arguably number one. It wasn't necessarily the best performed forward line last year. Uh, we know Adelaide kicked the most goals, but we'll put Geelong in there for now. And then arguably consider the D section. Who are the teams that have some of the worst forward lines in the comp? Now, I'm going to be completely honest here. In my preparation for this, on paper, I do actually think that Fremantle probably does have close to the worst forward line on paper in the competition. So Jai Amos kicked 41 goals last year. But like I said, I think second, equal second was Michael Walters, who was turning 34 this year, and Lockie Schultz, who's just left the club. The year before that, Lobb was one of their top scorers, if not the highest scorer off the top of my head. He also left the club. So we're looking at a forward line of Jai Amos, who of course is very good. Michael Walters is probably the next most prolific goal scorer. Luke Jackson kicked about 22 goals last year, and you know, he could be on the way up. But we don't see a lot of goals from guys like Josh Tracy, who at the moment is their best 22. Um, you know, Matt Tabiner probably starts outside their 22, if I'm not mistaken. Switkowski's good, doesn't kick a lot of goals. Fredericks is not high volume either. So as far as their team goes, their forward line is their Achilles heel. And I will say they do have a good midfield and back line. So I feel comfortable with that ranking. I'm going to put the Western Bulldogs probably in B tier. I actually think on paper, this team is pretty good. Norton is 24, turning 25 this year. Jamari Ewell Hagen, you think is on the verge of breaking out. Maybe not this year, but the year after that. But even Cody Waitman, I still think is a very, very good small forward. Probably lacks depth after that. You know, Rory Lobb is probably still a first choice player, I would have thought, as that third tall who can ruck. James Harms comes into this team. is probably like a half forward midfield rotation. Anthony Scott is probably another name that gets close to getting games this year. I'm not 100% sure exactly whether he plays round one. I'm not that close to the action. Now, Sam Darcy as well is another prolific talent who could who could take his game to the next level. So I think the top end here for the Bulldogs is pretty damn good. Like I'm, I'm almost forecasting a little bit what I expect to see this year. I think their forward line will be very good. Now in the C tier, I'm going to put St. Kilda in here. Now this one is tough for me because I actually think that it is ridiculously talented and has some of the best smalls in the comp. Like Jack Higgins and Dan Butler are very good smalls. We saw Machido Owens play as a bit of a hybrid third tall last year. But if you look at total output versus just potential, the forward line hasn't really been a strength of theirs. Now, it did have a lot of injuries last year. I do realize that, and it's certainly not bottom tier. When you consider the talent of guys like Max King, Jack Higgins, uh, Mateus Filippo, Machido Owens, yes, I see it. But on actual output right now, it's not a particularly strong forward line. So I'm, I'm going to put them in C with a, a stack of potential to potentially become one of the better forward lines in the years to come. Now, we'll chuck Adelaide in A. I think that's fair to suggest, right? What, a Taylor Walker kicked like 75 goals or something last year? He's an absolute star. And then there's Smalls, obviously, in Isaac Rankin, Rochelle. Some talent's about to take the next step, you think, in Fogarty and Thilthorpe. You know, I, th I think it's deep. You know, Pedler kicked 26 goals as well. Uh, I don't think I need to make too much of an argument for Adelaide being a top-tier forward line. Another team probably in the B section... I'm going to probably put Carlton in here. I think it's top heavy. I think Charlie Kerno is, you know, the best forward in the game, I would say, pretty comfortably. Back-to-back -back Coleman's. They have another Coleman medalist in that forward line, but he kicked 29 goals, 29 last year. But past that, you know, I think Jesse Motlop is a good young talent, but on current output, not necessarily an actual A grader just yet. Jack Martin is probably certainly talented, but whether he would walk into every single other team forward line of the comp, I would say no. I think always is underrated, but I do think it's pretty top heavy, so I can't possibly put it top tier, even though it has Charlie. Kerno in it. Uh, in C, I'm going to say GWS probably here. And now, again, it's a little bit lopsided. Toby Green is, you know, one of the best players in the competition and kicked 66 goals last year. And the way that Hogan and Riccardi ended the season last year, 
made me feel pretty good about the way they're heading, but it's certainly not an absolute strength of this GWS team, in my opinion. I'd say it's the weakest part of the ground for them behind their midfield and their back line, obviously. Brent Daniels, again, another really underrated small forward. What works for the Giants is they've got, you know, a couple of high draft picks in Cab and Phoenix Govard, uh, who could potentially improve this weakness in the future. But right now, it's probably probably third tier. I'm also probably going to put West Coast again in D tier. Um, so for those who don't watch West Coast too closely, it is actually a very well-performed forward line in terms of scoring efficiency. Like West Coast were far and away the the worst side for getting the ball inside 50 last year. And yet there were plenty of games where the forwards still made pretty good use of those opportunities. I mean, Oscar Allen kicking 53 goals in one of the worst teams we've seen in a long time. Kind of speaks to that. That being said, I think, you know, who's the next most dangerous forward after Oscar Allen? On current form, it's probably a 31-year-old Jamie Cripps. Jack Darling's fallen away. Liam Hen- Liam Ryan, sorry, has uh, missed a lot of football. There's a lot of fresh new blood in there, which I think could take this forward line, you know, into being a real strength in the future. Ryan Marrick, Noah Long, Tyler Brockman, but at the moment on performance, it's still it's still D tier. Collingwood, I'm probably going to put in D uh, B tier. Sorry, <laughs> that nearly that nearly triggered you. Uh, Collingwood, yeah, it's a tricky one. Again, probably the weak part of their team behind their back line and their midfield. What saves this Collingwood team, who you know, without McStay in particular who in my opinion is not, you know, an A-grade key forward. What rescues it to some extent is, you know, the the small to medium types. And their smalls are probably the best batch of smalls in the comp. Um, Lockie Schulz joins Bobby Hill. You know, we just saw how amazing he was in the grand final. Bro McCreary is pretty damn good. Jamie Elliott, of course, and Brody Majacek is their best forward. So I think it's still a pretty good forward line, but it's not top tier. I'm going to put the Swans in C as well. Uh, again, so this this ranking could really rest on you know how guys like Logan McDonald, Amati, and McLean go this year. Like their tolls, they're just a bit raw at the moment. Like they they could this could be the year, but it's not the strongest trio of tolls in the comp. And some of their medium types haven't really had the same impact. Oh, I'm thinking of Isaac Heaney, really. 49 goals in 2022, and I think 30 in 2023, and it was a bit wayward. Papley is obviously a gun. There's Will Hayward, who's decent as well. But I don't think this Sydney forward line packs the same punch as some of the teams ahead of it. I'm also going to include Essendon in C. Uh, you know, I'm kind of optimistic at how their team, their forward line in particular, could click. I think Peter Wright is a bit underrated, but at the same time, not a massively high volume number one forward. Kyle Langford had a great season last year, uh, but 51 goals. Stringer could go either way. And there's a few types that could that could give him a different look. Like Jay Gresham's just come into this team. Perkins could be on the verge of becoming a very good forward midfielder. He's taken his time a little bit. I think Jai Menzies is a bit of an underrated young gun, as I've talked about before. And I really like the look of Nate Caddy. So there's talent there. And I think there's different ways Essendon can hurt you. But at the same time, on paper, it's not that strong a forward line yet. Now with Gold Coast, I'm going to put them in C as well. (laughs) We're starting to pack out the Cs, but they just happen to be there in front of me. Gold Coast forward line is pretty damn good. It's just quite young. So Lukosius and King combined for 79 goals last year, 40 and 39. You know, if you told me Ben King is a contender for the common this year, I would believe you, but he hasn't done it yet. So I feel... I feel a bit awkward putting them a little bit higher. Bailey Humphrey as well has come in as a impact medium forward where I think he'll play most of his footy again in the forward line this year. I've also talked up Ben Ainsworth to no end as well. But other than that, like Casbolt has you know made a name for himself to some extent or at least established himself in that best 22. Nick Holman's still around. Malcolm Roses Jr. is a little bit unproven but decent from what we've seen. So I think C's about right for Gold Coast. I'd put Hawthorne in A tier. Uh, again, this this one's a little tricky because they've kind of transplanted in a bunch of forwards and, and it's hard to extrapolate based on potential. But if you simply just look at the depth of talent of it, it's hard to go past. So their best forwards, I would say, Luke Bruce is probably the number one man. Mitch Lewis, I feel like it's inevitable he's going to have a great year. I feel very confident about that. Gunston's come back into this team. Uh, there's Dylan Moore as well, who I think is underrated. Ginevan, Nick Watson, Connor McDonald, and Marby or Chol even. So I think the depth of that is fantastic. Luke Bruce is probably still an A-grade small forward. We are yet to see them all play together, which I realize makes this tricky, but I do think on talent, at least, Hawthorne is A-grade. Now, this one might be controversial because a lot gets said of their forward line, in particular their forward line efficiency, but I'm going to put Melbourne in B. I think it's actually a very good forward line when you look at some of the names here. So Jacob Van Royen, uh, maybe he hasn't established himself as an A-grader by any stretch, but you do feel like 
he could still have a very good season in front of goal. Like he's hit that point where he probably could kick that 35, 40 goal season. Absolutely no worries. Bailey Friction, I think, is a star. I think he is probably the best player in this forward line, to be completely honest. Cozzy Pickett as well, you know, has actually had a, a number of good years in a row. Like getting around the 40 goal mark, getting four tackles a game. Shane McAdam comes into this team. They've added Jack Billings. Harrison Petty is a bit of a question mark. It's certainly not A tier. But B tier, like on paper, I think this Melbourne forward line is actually pretty damn good. Brisbane probably goes to A tier as well. Again, probably no one standout like Coleman chance, but Danaher kicked 60 goals. Cameron's kicked like 55, like four years in a row. Um, you know, Zach Bailey, he put as well, actually puts up a lot of goals. And I just think, you know, the, the defensive edge of that Brisbane team, the well-roundedness of it, and the amount of contributors that sort of contribute evenly, I think it's definitely A tier. North, I think is D tier. Uh, again, you know, part of this is structural. So you got you got Nick Larkey, obviously, far and away, definitely A grade, common metal chance. But past that, there's a lot of medium types with potential, but I just, the structure of it, it kind of gives me the ick with North Melbourne. So you got Nick Larkey. I think Stevenson kicked the second most or, or around that mark. Cam Zerha is a very good player. I like what I've seen of Paul Curtis. I like what I've seen of Eddie Ford. There's Zane Dozma comes into this team. Braden George gets a debut. It's just very young as well. Like, who's the oldest player in that forward line that I just named? Maybe Zerha, 25, 26. Larkey, about the same. Stevenson's around that mark, but all of those players are the oldest. If they can bridge the gap between what Nick Larkey's kicking and what the rest of the forward line is producing, then they'd they probably go higher. But I, I probably think they're probably... You'd probably rate it higher than West Coast and Fremantle. Port Adelaide's an iffy one as well for me. I'll put them in B. I'll explain why. I think their small to medium types are good. And, you know, Charlie Dixon's a good player... Well, he was a good player and he's sort of at the end of his career now and, and hasn't quite replicated that previous form. But Todd Marshall has been fairly consistently good and I think could be on the verge of a breakout. But Sam Palpepper as well was a very, very good high half forward. Kicked 31 goals last year, laid a ton of tackles. Junior Rioli is also super effective. Finn Layson as well, would he kick like 38 goals, I think? That's going off the top of my head. So forgive me if I got that wrong, but he's, he's actually been pretty productive in front of goal. And he got a few types there as well who could you know, really develop and take it to the next level, like Georgie Artis and even Horn Francis, you'd probably include as a forward partly as well. Can't remember if I said Ollie Lord, but he's also worth mentioning um, for a good final series. So I think it's probably B without necessarily having any standout stars, but you feel like one or two of them could make that leap. And Richmond, uh, I'm iffy between C and D because Tom Lynch is a star, but you know, West Coast and North Melbourne also have stars. And Tom Lynch is certainly more proven than say an Oscar Allen, but he's also you know, at the back end of his career. And Dusty Martin is obviously fantastic. Still still a very good forward, but it's kind of after that, where do their goals come from? Shea Bolton probably plays more forward line this year. That strengthens it. But, you know, their second key forward is Jacob Kaczynski. Jack Graham's a good player. Samson Ryan's a good young talent. Noah Cumberland. Like, I don't think that depth justifies any higher than D tier. Anyway, guys, I'm sure this will be controversial, but let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. What would you do differently? What did you like about this video? Probably nothing. But as always, it's all a bit of fun. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate being subscribed and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.